What's going on, everybody? You know, as we dip a bit closer to the holiday season, the need for good gifts and games to pick up from the eShop when we have cards that are just burning a hole in our Christmas stocking, it's at an all-time high. So today, we are exploring five more great games that you can pick up on the eShop for under $25. Let's take a look. You know, we might not be getting Cyberpunk 2077 on the Switch, but the developers at Dreadlocks have given us our own excellent Cyberpunk-themed game in Dex. At its core, you play as the titular character in a dystopian Metroidvania game that is completely customizable to your playstyle. You want to go quiet killer all Ezio style and assassinate from the shadows? Be my guest. If you like going down in a rain of gunfire so John Bon Jovi can sing a power ballad about you, going down in a blaze of glory, do it. There's a ton of RPG elements at play in this 2D side-scrolling action game. There's a massive voice cast for the game, and the ambient sound and music is spectacular. And that's before we even get to the visuals, which have their own distinct style, yet feel truly immersed in a cyberpunk setting. There's good challenge here as well. It's not a gimme to be able to get through things, so you want to save often and make sure you're exploring every room you go into to, in order to collect augments, healing items, and any weapons or ammunition you can find. Parents, do be aware, Dex is an M-rated game and has some heavy language, drug use, and sexual innuendo throughout, but, I mean, it's a cyberpunk game, it's kind of a given. It can be picked up for $19.99. As a huge fan of the Fire Emblem series, picking up Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light was about as automatic as it gets for me. This is where it all started for the series, and this introduces us to the character of Marth, a mainstay sword fighter that I'd wager 99% of us were made aware of due to Super Smash Bros. It's kind of fascinating to see where the series started and see honestly, how much it still relies on its core design principles. The gameplay is everything you've seen before in Fire Emblem, just stripped down to work on the NES's hardware limitations. Movement paths aren't displayed, you just kind of have to guesstimate how far you can go, though your movement icon will stop when you reach your limitations. Combat's exactly what it always has been, with limited number of attacks based on how many weapons you have remaining in your inventory. It's a really fun flashback and fun exploration of the series' roots, and up against the massive endeavors like Fire Emblem Three Houses or any of the ones from the 3DS, it shows just how much of that core design and gameplay experience are still intact and completely viable via today's modern design expectations. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Sword of Light can be picked up for $5.99. So I had Cthulhu Saves Christmas by Zeboid Games suggested for me back in October, I think, by one of my oldest friends, David. And I am so glad he brought this game to my attention. The game is ridiculous, and honestly, it's perfect in its execution. To start out, while it is a 90s RPG, uh, with a large cast of characters united against the forces of evil, things take a sharp left, literally with everything else in the game. The game starts with Cthulhu waking up from a nap and having his powers stolen by Santa via Christmas package. And then he sets off on the road to revenge. He teams up with Crystal the Ice Maiden, also known as Santa's daughter, after finding out it wasn't the actual Santa who stole his powers, but the Christmas League of Evil. Along the way, you team up with Baba Yaga and the Bell Schnickel to fight the evils of Jack Frost, Krampus, and the others, as well as building up your relationships. Graphically, the game is a gorgeous sprite-based adventure and looks and plays solidly. One of the things I really, really like about it is there's a meter in each area that shows you how many enemy encounters are left to be had, and it grows in color like a threat meter showing when you're going to run into a fight. Clear them all out, and you're just set to explore without having a slew of random encounters to deal with. It's a refreshing gameplay mechanic, and it makes you actually want to clear a dungeon. With hilarious writing, a great look, and awesome sound with solid RPG mechanics, you can be impish or admirable and pick up Cthulhu Saves Christmas for $9.99. Hey look kids, another game from way forward on one of Jay-Z shop lists. Mighty Switch Force Collection is one part classic platformer, one part puzzle fest, and one part twitchy speedrun extravaganza where you play as Officer Patricia Wagon. Yeah, her, her name's Patty Wagon. Your job is to get through each stage as quickly as possible. Shooting monsters, swapping blocks, launching yourself through the air, and triggering explosions to clear out paths, and capturing the five hooligan sisters who somehow escape every level. The game is, unsurprisingly, gorgeous. It really shows the strengths of Way Forward with their sprite work and character design. Honestly, I think the price would be worth it for just one game, but Mighty Switch Force Collection gives you four games, all of which do something a bit different and switch up the core gameplay to make each unique and exciting to play. One of my favorite aspects of this game beyond just the solid gameplay and design is that it's designed for quick play. Got a few minutes on the train to work or waiting for a Zoom call to start? Knock out a level. It's quick, fun, and awesome. The Mighty Switch Forts collection from WayForward can be picked up for $19.99. 
Towerfall was suggested for me by the immortal John Hancock, and it's honestly taken me a few months to get around to including it. And damn it, do I regret it. Towerfall got its start on, of all places, the Ouya. Remember that? And is the first game from Matt Makes Games, now known as Extremely OK Games, the creators of Celeste. Towerfall is basically, what if Joust and Super Smash Brothers had a baby that was obsessed with Green Arrow and Hawkeye? I'll, I'll explain. The game is designed to be a massive multiplayer experience with up to six players competing against each other or up to four players competing together in order to clear out the campaign mode. Each stage is multi-platform, allowing you to jump, dodge, shoot, and move freely in order to set up your attack. Though, unlike Oliver Queen or Clint Barton, you do have a limited number of arrows to use, though you can go grab them after shooting them from the corpses of your slain opponents. You know, like every Sunday. So lots of combat, multi-level stages, bows and arrows, that's our Smash meets Green Arrow and Hawkeye bit of things. Joust comes into play where you're able to wrap around the stage where there are gaps, so falling down a pit at the bottom of the stage won't kill you. It just drops you from the top of the stage in the corresponding opening. It makes movement fun and unpredictable, and allows you to really be mobile and think on your feet to complete your combat objectives. It's fast, fun, and the campaign mode is ridiculously challenging and rewarding when you beat a level, and can be picked up for $19.99. All right, guys, there we have it. December 2020, five more games that you can purchase for under 25 bucks. And actually, I did you one better this month. Everything is under 20. Each of these games are great things to add to your digital collection on the Switch if you get an eShop card in your stocking or under the tree. And with a wide variety of genres here, I really think there's a little bit of something for everybody. In particular, I personally wouldn't sleep on Towerfall, Dex, or the Mighty Switch Force collection. But honestly, you can't go wrong with Fire Emblem or Cthulhu Saves Christmas either. All five of these games are really fun. Until next time, I have been Jay. I appreciate you being here and giving us a bit of your time to watch this video. Be sure to play more games, stay square, take care, and happy holidays.